Hey guys, I'm Adam Caesar. I'm here with another episode of Project Black T-Shirt. Today I want to know, what is your favorite decade in horror cinema? Mine, and it relates to this video we're doing, is the 70s. When films feel like they really do have a range of what they could or could not contain, or what they could or could not do, um, just the 70s is the decade where I feel like there is the most pushing forward of the idea of horror cinema in all its varied subgenres. We're going to talk a little bit about that today. So when I do uh, my video reviews of like catalog titles or re-releases or new Blu-rays, uh, they always do terribly uh, as far as views. Just like more people watch when I like make up lists of books, when I review new release movies. It's just the way the YouTube search algorithm kind of works. So we're gonna try something a little bit different today because I do love talking about these catalog titles. I do love talking about these re-releases and you know what? The hell with you, uh, YouTube. I'll, I'll do what I want and then hopefully people will watch it. Um, I'm gonna do five different shorter capsule reviews of five somewhat new releases, some of them brand new, some of them this week as I'm filming this. Uh, horror films on Blu-ray, recently reissued. All films from the 70s. You're gonna want to stay tuned to the end of the video because as always I do my book recommendation so if you like these movies you might like these books um, and I will be saving the best movie definitely the best movie on the list for last. First up we have 1971's Willard uh, a movie that has a place near and dear to my heart it is one of those movies that when you talk about mom and pop video stores when you talk about um, VH, the VHS era. It's one of those movies that really I grew up renting all the time. I would rent it from a little store called Mr. Video on Long Island and then I would rent it from Hollywood Video uh, once we kind of my family switched over to renting movies from there. I would rent this and its sequel Ben. Willard is a movie starring Bruce Davison, one of the few uh, horror icons, one of the few people that in recent years I've, uh, I've, I've seen at a convention. I saw him at Monster Mania uh, a few years ago and I'm like, you know what, I'll, I'll, I'll pay the money to have Bruce Davison sign an autograph for me with this beautiful 8x10 where he wrote, Adam, tear him up, Bruce Davison. Uh, one of my prized possessions here. Willard is a movie that took a long, 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 long time getting to digital, and I don't mean Blu-ray, I mean DVD at all. There was no DVD of this, there was no DVD of Ben, even when the uh, remake with Crispin Glover came out, which is actually a pretty good movie in and of its own right, um, I was kind of like, oh, now that New Line's releasing this new this new uh, remake on DVD, they'll, someone will have to release Willard. Uh, sadly not. This is the first version of it that's been in digital. I think you get you get the Blu-ray and the DVD. Scream Factory does that. They they throw in the DVD when you get the Blu-ray. It is a movie that had impossible expectations of little childhood Adam, uh, you know, watching it and loving it and really connecting with these characters, uh, not the human and non-human characters in the movie, uh, and 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 somewhat didn't live up to it because it, kind of what could live up to a kid's you know, nostalgia and love for a certain movie. Uh, it, it is a movie that, that I was incredibly surprised, especially on the brand new, very like nice looking, uh, especially since I haven't seen it since VHS, uh, transfer. I was surprised how much like a, uh, a TV movie it felt, uh, even though it is, it is, it was a theatrical film. Uh, it, it has kind of rudimentary staging, Still a movie I really, really love. Uh, Bruce Davis' performance is is the thing that makes this movie sing. Uh, his his kind of um, he's a horror villain, I guess, but he's he is the protagonist uh, for all intents and purposes. He is the person you root for in the movie, and it's more of a tragedy than anything else. Uh, just a really, really great movie. Um, one of the few uh, uh, animal-driven horror films from the 70s where you don't feel like they like tortured a whole bunch of animals to make it. Uh, so that alone makes it worth recommending. Willard, if you've never seen it, uh, how have you never seen it? Well, I know how because it's never been on DVD. Uh, but you really, really, really need to check it out. Uh, but also know that this is 10-year-old uh, Adam talking, uh, not 30-year-old uh, Adam talking. The next film is... Chris Robinson's 1975 The Intruder. And the interesting thing about this movie and this disc in particular is that this movie was lost for 40 years. There's, this this Blu-ray is taken from the only print of it known in existence. 
Garage House Pictures put this out. Uh, it has a, a wonderful, which this I think this is a great idea, Garage House does this. They put the liner notes kind of inside instead of doing like alternate cover art or whatever. They put liner notes inside uh, so they don't have to print up an extra page for the thing, uh, which I do miss liner notes, and uh, Arrow still does them and still does a great job with them, but I understand that production costs on discs are, are taxing, so I love to get the inside story in here about where the print came from, how the film was found, there are a bunch of movies named The Intruder. A bunch of pretty good movies named The Intruder. There's the uh, the 80 supermarket slasher. Uh, Sam Raimi uh, produced uh, The Intruder, which is a, a movie I really like. Uh, there is The Intruder with uh, William Shatner, the Roger Cor Roger Corman's like quote unquote serious film uh, from the 60s. Uh, William Shatner, kind of a, 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 a message movie about race, which is I think a great movie. But this The Intruder is very very different. It is basically Ten Little Indians or House on Haunted Hill, that style of picture done in a in a update done and updated into a very 70s style. Uh, they call this a proto slasher on the back. It stars <laughs> Mickey Rooney, and then you also have uh, Lily Munster from uh, from the Munsters, and you have Lurch from the Adams Family in here too. It is a a crazy little movie that at first. Uh, for I'd say like the first 45 minutes does not seem like it's going to be a crazy little movie it just seems like it's uh, kind of a, a mystery pot boiler you can be like oh well, I understand why this movie was missing for so long uh, but it does take a quite a turn in the last reel and become something really memorable really uh, really crazy really zany uh, it's 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 a proto slasher but it's it's not so much a slasher in that it is a, a kind of Agatha Christie type um, knock them off one by one mystery where the mystery never really adds up you never really get enough clues to have determined who the killer is yourself and then there are like three like weird reversal slash red herrings right at the end that like it's like oh is this the killer oh no there's another oh there's a killer uh it it's a lot of fun it's really like i said the ending is is really wacky there are some 70s kung fu moves there are people in leisure suits people in questionable printed shirts uh, if you like that kind of picture uh, and you just like the novelty of having a movie that like you'll be like one of a couple hundred people who's seen it ever uh, this is the disc for you to pick up the intruder by garage house pictures they do a great job uh, I'm always really happy when I pick up their discs uh, it's 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 uh, well worth, if anything that I've said sounds interesting, even if the words Mickey Rooney sound interesting to you, uh, this is well worth a pick up. It's shot in Florida. Uh, it's got that kind of Florida key kind of sleazy worn-in feel to it. It's it's really, really fun. It is, and it's a movie that uh, I'd, I'd text my friends right after watching and be like, this movie charmed the pants off me. And it, it is That is a good way of putting it. The the cover uh, by the great Steve Romano is a little bit misleading because it does make it seem like a Friday the 13th type thing. Uh, but this is, make no mistake, this is a charmer. This is a movie that if any of this 70s kitsch that I've just talked about appeals to you, you will enjoy. Next we have 1976's uh, Canadian uh, religious horror exorcist knockoff Kathy's Curse. This is a movie that I heard a lot about. I heard a lot about from uh, Birth Movies Desk, uh, Brian Collins, if you follow him on Twitter or anywhere. He freaking loves talking about this movie. Uh, he's, he's in, he shows up in the special features like twice. Um, it's a movie that I didn't really know much about other than like, oh, like the people seem to like it. It has, to, has like kind of a midnight movie vibe to it. Uh, Severin put this out. Severin uh, does, does a great job. And this is not a movie I liked. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a movie I enjoyed. Your mileage probably will vary, but the reason I'm putting it in this video and the reason I'm talking about it is I think the special features are legitimately better um, and worth kind of the purchase price uh, on their own. Kathy's Curse, real quick, is about a kind of quasi-possessed, quasi-haunted house uh, story uh, where a little, uh, little girl gets possessed by a girl who used to live in this house that died. Um, when her father went on this like weird misogynist bender against uh, her mother uh, so the the girl gets possessed and she's immediately like this weird um, internet troll of a human being where she's just spewing misogynist stuff and 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 the charms of that kind of 
I hate to use the term so bad it's good because I really don't like that term, but like the charm of that uh, that element to the movie where like you have a 10 year old girl just like swearing up a storm uh, and doing inappropriate things is 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 undeniable. Like I feel like if I had watched this with someone else, if I had had a couple buddies over and a couple beers, I probably would have liked it a lot more. But as it is, it's just it's just a weird atonal movie that, like I said, the special features are are, are I think better than the film themselves. Uh, the the one of especially of note is the actress who played Kathy and her mother, who was a, uh, a set designer or a costume designer. I can't remember uh, on the film. Uh, they cut back and forth between interviews of them, and they're, they're these two very sweet Canadian ladies um, just kind of like going through their scrapbook and talking about the making of the film. Uh, it's, it's worth watching the movie for that, and that it's worth watching that because it's, it's a great feature, and it, it is weirdly heartwarming. Um, it's one of those things that I, I really, really enjoyed watching that, and, and I'm like... Right after watching the movie, I was like, was that worth watching? And then I put on the features, and I'm like, nah, I guess it was worth it. Uh, so that's that's that picture. Clearly not the most rousing endorsement, but if uh, if that sounds like it's up your alley, or if you like uh, schlock pictures, you know, WTF moments of like, oh, that was inept but charming, like, you'll probably like Kathy's Curse. Next on our list is 1973's... Jesus, how am I going to pronounce this? S s the the film's name is s like the sound a snake makes. It's S one two three four five six seven seven times over. If you want to search for that, you go s s you put S seven times. Don't say it. Hiss it is the tagline. Uh, this is a movie that is uh, out of its mind. It is a crazy crazy movie. The only thing that keeps me from giving this my strongest recommendation is the fact that it's it's. The 1970s, uh, the ASPCA clearly wasn't on set when they made this movie, and you see a couple snakes hurt in a in in a way that you're like, ah, was this really worth making this movie to to you know hurt these poor things? Uh, other than that, uh, the 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 scenes that don't involve that, a guy working uh, with a uh, a a snake doctor like a herpetologist as uh, is, is kind of an intern, kind of the dumbest protagonist I've ever seen in a horror movie. Um, he's getting shots to inoculate him from anti-venom, but what the shots are doing, spoiler, is turning him into a giant cobra. Uh, it is a, a, a mad scientist movie, it is a nature run amok movie, it is a 70s melodrama, it has weird matte paintings on the lens uh, to blur out uh, nudity because it is a Zanuck and Brown picture. It does, it does feel like halfway between you know, your kind of normal grindhouse driving fodder and like a kid's picture, uh, is, has to be seen to be believed. This Blu-ray came out uh, from Scream Factory. Uh, I think this is one of the older Blu-rays in the video because I, I just kind of grabbed a bunch of stuff that I wanted to talk about and that all came out in the 70s. Yeah, if, if that sounds like it's up your alley and it, it's, it, it's kind of up my alley, is definitely a, a movie you gotta, you gotta check out. As promised, I've saved the best for last, and that is 1973's Messiah of Evil. I probably won't talk about this as much as I talked about the other films. It is a movie I hadn't even really heard of until I was driving back with my friends uh, from Scares That Care uh, this year. Uh, my friend Matt Serafini was like, oh, have you seen Messiah of Evil? He, he had claimed uh, it was one of the better uh, horror films from the 70s, and it's, it's on the short list, if the short list is, you know, 25, 30 long. 40 long. It's 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 a movie that surprised me and scared me and is has this weird dreamlike quality. It's really really good. It's kind of an art film version of Richard Matheson's novel I Am Legend meeting up with some like Lovecraftian elements of like a deserted town or like Har Hotel, a movie I've talked about on the on the show before. And Messiah of Evil. This is out through Code Red. Out of the five of these Blu-rays, this is probably the hardest one to track down because Code Red discs kind of go in and out of print. You got to check the Code Red Big Cartel and you got to check Diabolic DVD. But I'll put all the links, as with all of these things, I'll put all the links in the description um, so you can find these movies the best that you can. Well, well, well worth checking out. There is a, um, a full frame kind of crappy looking version streaming on Amazon Prime. I would... I would say if you're interested in this movie, if you look up a little bit about it and you're like, oh, that's a movie I want to see, 
don't don't rush to watch the you know quote unquote free version on Amazon Prime because widescreen and touched up makes a whole bunch of difference for this movie. It, it, I tried watching a little bit of the Amazon Prime version and it was not it was not doing it for me. This is is a gorgeous uh, transfer and it looks really good on the Code Red disc. That is all five films from the 70s. Uh, if you missed any of the titles or you want to know where to buy them, I will put links in the description. Like I said, Diabolic DVD, uh, they have a line on pretty much all of these. Um, Amazon, I'll put those links in there too because I'll put the links that help me out when you click them. As far as book recommendations this week, I'm doing it a little bit differently because if you follow the blog or if you follow me on Twitter or Facebook or something like that, you'll know that I've expanded black t-shirt books to include other authors. So if you like me and you like my aesthetic and you like the stuff that I put out, the, the novel, short stories, novellas, things that I write, you will like Scott Cole's Slices, which is a collection of 30-something short stories, some of them very short, surrealist, bizarro, horror stories. Uh, I pitch it as early Tim Burton meets uh, David Lynch. If either of those two names spike your interest, you're going to want to pick up uh, Slices by Scott Cole, which is on paperback and ebook. I'll put the links in the description. Uh, and Pat Lacey's A Debt to Be Paid, which I pitch as kind of It Follows, but if it were made in the 80s by Full Moon Entertainment. A Debt to Be Paid, quick little novella with uh, a couple bonus short stories in this new Black T-Shirt Books edition, both of which have gorgeous covers, uh, both of which uh, look really great in paperback, but the ebooks are just as good. Please, 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 if you read these books, if you enjoy these books, go to Amazon and leave a review. Authors like myself, authors like Scott Cole and Pat Lacey, they really, really benefit. They really kind of make their bread and butter on the reviews that people leave because those reviews allow more people to see the books, more people to be interested in the books, more people to possibly buy the books. So if you like a book, doesn't matter if it's our books or any books, please leave a review because you're doing a great thing for the author. That's all. I'm Adam Caesar. You can sign up for my mailing list, get a free sample of my work. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that crap. Please, if you like this video, hit like. If you really like this video, subscribe. Tell me in the comments what your favorite decade of horror films are. Uh, and that's it. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.